Welcome back to our channel. Last week we spoke about zero E, so following on from that, today's episode will be about hydrogen fuel cells versus hydrogen combustion engines. Let's start with the history of the fuel cell. So, starting in 1838, Sir William Grove came up with the idea to construct a cell consisting of two separate steel compartments, each fed by either hydrogen or oxygen gas. At the time, he called his invention a gas voltaic battery. Unfortunately, it didn't produce enough electricity to be of much use. So, starting in 1838, Sir William Grove came up with the idea to construct a cell consisting of two separate steel compartments, each fed by either hydrogen or oxygen gas. At the time, he called his invention a gas voltaic battery. Unfortunately, it didn't produce enough electricity to be of much use. But in the 20th century, English engineer Francis Thomas Bacon matured the original idea to develop the world's very first hydrogen oxygen fuel cell in 1932. Since then, the hydrogen cell has been developed massively and is now being used by the space industry to power satellites and rockets for space exploration programs, including Apollo 11, since the 1960s. Similar to batteries, a fuel cell is a device that converts energy stored in molecules into, ele into electricity, electricity through an electrochemical reaction. Composed of two electrodes, an anode and a cathode, separated by an electrolyte membrane, a typical hydrogen fuel cell works in the following way. Hydrogen enters the fuel cell via the anode. Here, hydrogen atoms react with the catalyst and split into electrons and protons. Oxygen from the ambient air enters on the other side through the cathode. Then the positively charged protons pass through the porous electrolyte membrane to the cathode and the negatively charged electrons flow out of the cell and generate an electric current, which can then be used, for example, to power an electric or hybrid electric propulsion system. In the cathode, the protons and oxygen then combine to produce water, and a proton exchange membrane cell uses hydrogen gas and oxygen gas as fuel. Hydrogen fuel cells are great because fuel cells generate electricity through an electrochemical reaction. reaction. They are a clean source of power. In fact, fuel cells that use pure hydrogen are carbon free. Also, unlike batteries that need to be recharged, fuel cells can continue to generate electricity as long as the fuel source, hydrogen, is provided. Individual fuel cells can be stacked to form larger systems capable of producing more power, thereby allowing scalability. A single fuel cell can produce enough voltage to power small applications, while fuel cell stacks can be combined to create a large-scale multi-megawatt installations. And because there are no moving parts, fuel cells are silent and highly reliable. However, hydrogen is in the gas state at room temperature and pressure, so it is difficult to store in the car and fuel cells, an electric motor is significantly less durable than petrol engines and diesel engines, so they are not so long lasting. Also, they are very, very expensive to produce and maintain. In comparison to that, the hydrogen internal combustion engine is simply a modified version of the traditional gasoline powered internal combustion engine. Combustion, also known as burning, is a chemical process that involves releasing energy from a fuel and air mixture. In the case of hydrogen combustion, liquid or gaseous hydrogen is burnt in a modified gas turbine engine to generate thrust. This process is identical to traditional internal combustion, except hydrogen replaces its fossil fuel counterpart. Consisting of a fixed cylinder and one or more, one or more moving pistons, a spark ignition engine works in the following way. During the intake process, fuel is mixed with air and introduced into the cylinder. Then the piston compresses the fuel-air mixture, which is ignited by a spark. The ignition results in combustion. The expanding combustion gases drive the piston, which rotates the crankshaft, and this rotational motion turns the wheels in the case of automobiles. reasons why people want to convert to hydrogen combustion engines, such as it has a wide flammability range, meaning hydrogen can be combusted by a wide range of fuel air mixtures. In fact, hydrogen can run on a lean mixture, which means the amount of fuel is less than the amount needed for combustion with a given
given amount of air. This results in greater fuel economy and a final combustion temperature that is generally lower, which reduces the amount of pollutants, such as NOx emitted by the exhaust. Also, it has a high auto ignition temperature. This enables, high, enables higher compression ratios in a hydrogen engine compared to a hydrocarbon engine. A higher compression ratio results in greater thermal efficiency or less energy lost during combustion. This means most of the energy being used is useful. So to summarise, in a fuel cell vehicle, the hydrogen fuel is combined with oxygen, while the combustion in a hydrogen or gasoline powered engine is converted into mechanical energy. In a fuel cell vehicle, the chemical energy from the hydrogen and oxygen is converted into electrical energy. Today, hydrogen fuel cell technology and internal hydrogen combustion engines are being used for a variety of applications, including to provide emergency backup power to critical facilities like hospitals, replace grid electricity for critical load facilities like data, like data centers, power a variety of transportation modes such as cars, buses, trains and forklifts. Tomorrow, it could potentially power everything from low carbon cities and regions to portable computing devices to future zero emission aircraft, for example the Zero E we spoke about last week.